Hi, how's it going? So at this point we have got um, the library loaded in, imported and everything. That's awesome. The next step is we need to create a Vulkan instance. A Vulkan instance is very similar to an OpenGL context, except as I mentioned before, it is not tied to a single thread. Just a few things to get things started. I'm going to take all of these import statements and I'm going to put them in a separate file. So I'll make this config.py. That will have all of our common import statements. And that means that we can now shop things around and go to, um, we can make a bunch of different modular files and they will have access to, to Vulkan and any other libraries that we need. Um, in order to keep the tutorials or the, keep the main engine code as clean as possible, I'm going to be making external files. Um, so this one's going to be for the instance. Okay. So, um, what am I going to do? I'm going to make a function called, um, make instance, and that's going to take a few variables. That's going to take, um, a Boolean indicating whether we want to print debug messages and a string for the name of our application. So to start with, um, just a little note here. So an instance stores all of the per application state info. Um, and yeah, as it says here, it's a Vulkan handle, which is an opaque integer or pointer value used to refer to a Vulkan object. Okay. Generally, all these are 64-bit integers, pretty much, but uh, it's opaque, so it might be different. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll go to our engine and we'll make a function called... Okay, so what will, what will this do? We will go to the... Um, we'll make an instance, store it in self.instance, and that will be accessed by the make instance function here. Um, pass in self debug mode and the name of our application. Cool. And what we'll do is after we'll build the GFW window make the instance. Okay, cool. Um, now I guess let's just run this. It's not going to do much. So it says making an instance. Good. So we've jumped into this uh, part here. So um, first of all, one thing we'll need to store in the instance is the uh, version of Vulkan that we're using. So as of Vulkan 1.1, we got this function um, called enumerate instance version. Now in the C API, it um, takes a pointer to a, an integer as its argument, but in the Vulkan, uh, in the Python wrapper, if we just control click into this, it um, calls the C API and then returns that um, version number. And there's a bit of a funny thing going on here. I pull over the documentation here, look at instances. We have this enumerate instance version and it returns basically a 32-bit integer, uh, which is specified by this version numbers convention. So the version number is 32 bits and it's split into a variant, major, minor, and patch, okay? So variant we can think of like we've got OpenGL and OpenGL ES is like a different variant of OpenGL. At this point, there's really only one variant of Vulkan, so this will always be zero. Um, but that's the top three bits. So if we want to get the version number, then we shift the version down by 29 bits and that leaves the top three bits. The rest will be filled with zeros. Um, if we want to get the major version, well, take the version number, shift it down 22 bits. However, the top three bits will 
still be um, there. We want to remove that. So we'll put a mask or bitwise and to that with an unsigned hexadecimal, which basically just leaves the bottom or takes takes off the top three bits of a 32 bit number, basically. Sorry, takes off the top three bits of we've got 32. We've shifted it down by 22. So it takes off the, the first 10 bits. It leaves, leaves the first 10 bits. What am I even saying? Okay. Um, now there's this other version which is deprecated, which just shifts it by um, shifts it down by 22 bits, and that actually leaves in the variant. Um, so for that reason, not so good. That bit was deprecated, and this is actually kind of similar here. So if we go, okay. So now ne next thing we can do is um, get these. So if I just control click in here, some of these have been implemented. Um, major, minor, and patch has in the same way as the documentation. Oh, except for this. This should really, there should really be an and mask here, but I'm not gonna mess with a library that was already made. Um, okay. Um, however, if we wanna get the variant version, I've just implemented by hand um, that. I can actually, I reckon I can implement this here. Okay, so I'm just gonna implement this by hand. So we take that, we put it and with um, that hexadecimal, that, okay, good, that fixes it. All right, so let's just test that. Okay, now as we see, it's variant zero, major one, minor two, patch 182. So it's Vulcan version 1.2.182. Okay, cool. So um, then the next step, the next step is how do we use this version number? So one <clears throat> thing we can do is we have queried our system and found the, the version number which we can support maximum. So we can just use that version number that we queried. It will work on our system. We just have to um, do this bitwise and to remove the patch. It's a good idea to set the patch to zero. So this is setting the lower 12 bits to zero. It's what the knot is doing there. But then the other approach is, well, to maximize capability, compatibility, we can just declare that the app version we're using is a, a lower um, version. So this function make version <clears throat> takes the major number, minor number, and patch number. And if we control click here, we see that that is just doing bitwise operations to pack those together into a 32-bit integer. Awesome. So I'm actually going to go with this second version here um, because there's no reason that we should use that we need to use anything above Vulkan um, 1.0 at this point. Okay, the next part is we need to create some application info. So I'll just um, paste this prototype in here. So the way a lot of things get created is with C structures um, and the Python wrapper pretty much populates them. So we have this uh, enum called structure type. Um, however, this is a default value, so we don't need to do anything here. Then we have a pointer to the next um, thing. We could have a chain of different applications with pointers to each other. Um, in this case, we're gonna set that to none because we're only using one application. <clears throat> then we have the application name, the version, and, and all of this stuff. So we can go ahead and create this. And as you can see, I'm using the version for a lot of these, because it, it doesn't matter so much. It's just a number. Um, engine name, we're not using an engine, which is doing it the hard way. Okay. So the next thing is Vulkan is pretty much as thin as possible. Let's get rid of that. As thin as possible. So to get any feature, we need to request it um, at a certain creation point. For one thing, later on, we're going to want our... Um, app, our Vulkan app, to be able to use that GLFW window that we created. 
we're not using it right now, but we might later. So we need to query GLFW and say, give me the list of all of the extensions that you need in order to run. So um, we can also print that out. Okay, so this will just loop through the list of extensions and give out their names. So we'll just run this right now. And it says, um, GLFW has requested this um, Vulkan KHR surface and Win32 surface. Okay, so those are the extensions which we need. Oy. Those are the extensions which we need in order to create a an instance that can talk to GLFW. Okay. Okay, so we've got the application info. The next thing we need is instance creation info. I know it's a lot of different structures, structs, but um, hey, it is what it is. Uh, so again, structure type and pointer next are already set for us. There's also flags. Optionally, we can set some, some things, uh, but we're not going to use that at the moment. That's perfectly fine. Um, then the pointer to the application info is that app info that we declared up above. Okay, um, and enabling no layers at this point. Layers are functions which kind of slot into function calls, kind of like boundaries of function calls, and they perform a bit of, a bit of validation, check that the API is being used correctly, and they report debug errors if it's not. Um, we'll be looking at that in the next video in the series. But at the moment, we'll keep that out of the picture. Um, then we have the number of extensions that we're requesting and the uh, pointer to those extension names. At this point, we can go ahead and, um, and do it and create this. So the function is this uh, Vulkan create instance function. It takes uh, some creation info, and an allocator. Now, an allocator is a function which is used to allocate memory. If we set none as the allocator, then Vulkan uses its own implementation, its own memory allocator, which is pretty good in most cases. There are just some edge cases. Um, I guess, number one, if we're really pushing the system, we might be allocating really large chunks of memory, which could become fragmented. That could be an issue. And then number two, if we're really particular and trying to squeeze as much performance as possible, we might know a few things about the system we're working on, and we might have our own little bag of tricks that we can implement in a memory allocator. Um, but for now, we'll just set that to none. And this pointer to instance by default is none. This is going with the kind of um, this is going with the kind of C style of passing in a pointer and the pointer gets populated in the function, but we can ignore that. So it says this returns, throws an exception on failure. Let's uh, double check, let's inspect that. So if we click in, then we get this return and under the hood, the C, A C API returns a, um, an enum um, and Vulkan success indicates that it's being performed correctly. Um, however, if it hasn't, then we raise these exception codes. So if we just click in here, this exception codes is a dictionary. Um, and these are basically all of the kind of um, Vulkan errors, which the uh, system could throw, the library could throw. Okay, so good to know, but uh, we can leave that for now. All we're doing is just taking any kind of exception which gets thrown at all, and then saying, hey, what's what's going on here? So for instance, let's say we run this. Yep, seems to work. So then let's mess with it a little bit. Let's take out the allocator. So we're not declaring anything for our allocator. Then it just says failed to create instance. Good, so it's detecting errors properly. Okay, now the last thing is we have really, we've allocated some memory. So at the point where we clean up, 
where we clean up the engine, where we close, we also want to free that memory. So um, this is done with uh, Vulcan Destroy Instance. As we can see here from the signature, it's, it's very straightforward. It takes the instance you want to destroy and the, um, the pointer to the allocator that we're going to use to free the memory, which is the same allocator that, allocator that we use to allocate the memory. Anyway, so uh, that is it. I, yeah, I know things are a little esoteric, but here's how it, here's what we went through. In this video, we had a look at uh, basically what an instance is. We had a look at Vulkan's version number system, the way that um, version numbers are packed into a single 32-bit integer, how to unpack them, how to construct them, and all of that. We had a look at um, some of the structures involved in setting up an instance um, and querying ex extensions and uh, yeah, creating instances and destroying them. So I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.